Hi, everybody. This is A Wee Bit of Alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Tonight, uh, we're going to do a couple of things that um, are fun. One is, how do I introduce meeting into my solo practice? And what are the advantages of doing that? And the second thing is, we're going to return to bone breathing and go a little deeper on that. So uh, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, get started with this. So the, the idea of meeting is authentic engagement. And, you know, going back to, you know, my book, Finding You in a World of It, where I'm going to talk about it, the, there are four basic steps to meeting. And the first step is to get into a state of wholeness. And this is actually a fairly sophisticated goal and, and some philosophies, religions, et cetera, that's their whole, their whole uh, purpose is to get you in a state of wholeness. But we actually want to use that as our starting point. We do that by getting energetically coherent, that we tie the whole system together using the energy. And we've all explored that through pointing and reaching with the index finger. And, but that just opens the, the door. Then there are all these other things that we do to get to actually further enhance the, uh, the state of, of coherence and wholeness and fullness. You know, and so we're talking about the reaching with the elbows, feeling the elbows and reaching with that, or getting into a state of central equilibrium where not only does that get enhance your coherence, but it also connects you up to the big chi so that you're actually increasing the amount of the volume of chi that is that is moving through your your system. So the so we want to get into that state of coherence as our first order of business. And what that does is that it immediately takes us into the gap between thoughts. We are able to clear the mind and calm the nervous system. If we include that with the, with the three pillars, of which it's one, then we, it has the effect of not only filling up the system, but also calming the nervous system and to actually bring you into a, a calm centered state as well. But we get that as our first order of business to get the, uh, get that state of coherence going. Then the second step is presence. And that is locating yourself in space and time, not as a, an object, like say, oh, Rick is in his living room and he's talking on Zoom right now. And that's, that's, that's cool and it's, uh, it's part of the story, but it, it's not true presence. Presence is being able to locate here and now in absolute terms, rather than rather than as a, a in reference to some other object. Whenever you put yourself in the story, you say, anytime I say, "Oh, Rick is sitting on a chair," then Rick then becomes an object as well as the chair. And it's all part of a story, and it's all it's all going through my head, which then takes me out of the present moment and puts me into my thoughts, which then require a quarter to a half a second for that to run through my nervous system to come up with the uh, synopsis of what that moment was a quarter or a second, half a second ago. But if we, if, when I'm in a state of presence, it's just now. And that puts you in a different state of being. And this is oftentimes a byproduct of the energetic coherence. If you are aware of being energetically coherent, aware of yourself and the gap between thoughts, then you are moving, in, moving toward presence. And presence here means how much of me can I get into this place at this time? And the, the question I always have is a, um, 
as a way to help yourself locate that is to ask the question to yourself, where am I now? And answer it, here I am. And so by doing that, you, you create a, a, a framework in which to, to for, for being, you're locating yourself, not as, not as part of a story, but as a direct state of being. But getting that, going from energetic occurrence to presence. So there's a subtle step there where there is an awareness of location, both in space and time, but not as a, an intellectual activity. And so if you just do it with me right now, you point your index fingers and feel that. And notice going into the gap between thoughts. And then you ask yourself, where am I now? And answer, here I am. And it's, there's a decision there to locate yourself. And your ability to generate power is directly proportional to, you, to your ability to assume a, a place in space and time. Your ability to locate yourself now has a direct effect on how much energy, how much power you can generate. If your thoughts are all over the place, then you are, um, your energy is dissipated accordingly. So then the third step is context. And the question I ask there is what game am I playing now? And is this the game I want to play? So if you are in conflict with what you're doing, I really don't want to be here doing this thing that I'm doing. And oh my God, I wish I was, I wish I was fishing. You know, if that that if that's your mindset, then you are not occupying the present. You are you're not playing the game that you're playing right now. So there's a a decision there to actually do what you're doing. So you know the expression is do what you do what you're doing while you're doing it is applies here, but that requires knowing what the heck it is you're doing. So that requires you know a sense of context. What game am I playing now? I came up with this stuff a lot when I was playing push hands, like, you know, why is some stuff working sometimes and not, you know, and it came down to, oh, am I coherent? Am I present? Do I know what's going on? Am I aware of what's going on? It's not as an intellectual activity, but just as a, you know, an awareness of, of the situation I'm in and what I have to deal with in the present moment and sort of being able to instantly figure out what's the appropriate response. If I have no awareness of, my, of the context of my situation, then I'm kind of uh, uh, being bandied about by you know, uh, the whims of fate. If I say, no, no, this is what I'm doing. Let's say I'm doing a Qigong. What game am I playing? I'm playing the game of Rick's doing Qigong. And so then I go through the exercise and I have an idea of what it is that I'm trying to achieve in that and how to go about it. If I have no concept of what that is, I'm just sort of just moving my arms around blindly, then I'm not able to generate the energy that I'm trying to, uh, trying to create in that Qigong exercise. And then the fourth step is engagement. That is where I meet you with my whole being. And with my whole being means that there's a state of wholeness there, a wholeness that I'm then able to engage and direct. And in the, in the context of whatever it is. So right now I'm engaging all of you. And that is the context. The context is the somehow through the magic of Zoom, we are able to communicate across thousands of miles 
simultaneously, instantly, and I'm able to engage each of you and all of you in this exact moment. And it's kind of kind of cool. So, but that requires also that awareness of the context, awareness of the presence and awareness of the energetic coherence, all that comes together. So coming back full circle to this, how do we apply that to you know, an individual exercise? And that requires being able to focus your attention in a way that allows you to locate what is your, the question the, that comes up with engagement is, where are you now? Here you are. You locate whatever it is that you, or whoever it is, whomever it is that you want to engage. And that is the you to your I. When you engage, encounter that person or thing or energy or thought or whatever with your whole being, then you go into resonance. There's a state of resonance that, that occurs where the, the, the two things, the, the, the two othernesses are able to get together and resonate together in such a way as to not be distinguishable because you're in that transrational, transpersonal state, the uh, uh, non-objective awareness. And that's where the fun begins. That's where the Kung Fu happens. That's where the Tai Chi happens. If you are thinking about what do I do next? What am I going to, you know, how does this look, et cetera? Then you're not really fully in the moment of, of doing your, your Tai Chi. So in, in a solo form, being able to encounter your body as a partner in the exercise then allows you to go into resonance in the present moment. So the, if you just take a, um, you know, just, just touch something, so let's say touch your shoulder and you feel that, you are, when you do that, when you go into the feeling state, you bypass the intellectual activity. So it's no longer Rick is touching his shoulder is just now, there's just an event happening. And there's an awareness of the event and there's a, a sense of context for the event too, but I don't have to think about it because it's, there is a state of knowing there, knowing without thinking that enables me to, to be able to, in a super conscious state, be able to function like that. So when anytime we do this, we're able, the closer we can get to actually lining those things up so that we are hewing to that, that razor's edge, the more that we can bring energy and spirit to the moment. Shen. When we could get the mind focused to that degree so that we can actually feel what's going on without blocking our thoughts. The thoughts arise or, or not, but you are in, in that gap between thoughts. You can spot them as they bubble up like, like a lava lamp and that awareness is a state beyond the thinking, that super conscious state. So the, uh, let's take a, stand up please. So let's bring this into the three pillars. So first you want to get energetically coherent. 
you feel those index fingers, you reach with those, feel them. And allow yourself to just settle into that. And notice that you're able to sustain the gap between thoughts for quite some time. And you can be tempted to do this for quite a while and you would benefit considerably if you did so. But we're gonna go forward from here. So we have established energetic coherence. Now locate yourself. Where am I now? Here I am. So what's happening here is you're making a decision to be in the present moment. It's, the present is not something that's happening to you. <laughs> and by you that uh, we're talking about your <laughs> awareness, your consciousness, your ability to focus awareness and direct it. And to the degree that you are present, you're able to move through consciousness and into super consciousness. And then an awareness of context. What am I doing? What game am I playing now? And the game right now is just to stand here in a highly coherent state and allowing that coherence to amplify and to just get comfortable with that much coherence and that much presence. It's a simple act, it's just a state of, you know, for one of a better term, pure being. And then from here, we engage. This is where there's an awareness of self, I am doing something. I'm involved in an activity or a state or something here where I am, I am engaging something. There's a conscious awareness of my body. There's a conscious awareness of the floor. There's a conscious awareness of the space that surrounds me. I don't have to think about it. There's an awareness of those things. If I, if I forget, if I forget where I am, if my thoughts start to wander away, I just return to my presence. And from my presence, and from my awareness of the game that I'm playing, I then engage and I say, okay, where are you now? And here, it, this is, it's a, it's a little trick that is whatever I'm focusing on, I'm not trying to dissolve into the oneness of it all. I'm engaging life. I'm engaging the moment. I'm engaging space. I'm engaging body. I'm engaging energy. And anytime I think of those things, then there is a you know, there's an awareness of them as being something unique, something that has its uh, uh, its own stuff. To the degree that I'm willing to do that, 
you know, I then can start to create a resonance. Now I take that whole process and I move it to my feet and I feel the balls of my feet. And I include that in there. I'm present with that. I reach and I engage. The, where are you now? Balls of my feet. And I feel those. There you are. I engage the crown of my head. I feel that and I resonate with that. <coughs> I feel the Jade pillow gate, I engage that. Where are you? Oh, here you are. I go into resonance with the jade pillow gate. I feel the Wei Lu, the, the energy gate at the, at the tip of my tailbone. And I relax my lower back and I feel that. Where are you now? Here you are. I go into resonance with that without losing resonance with all those other things. I don't have to think about them because we are all right now in a super conscious state. You don't have to think about it. You have to keep thinking about your, your crown or your jade pillow gate or your fingers or whatever. You're feeling them. And in that super conscious state, you're able to handle a vast number of things simultaneously because you're not running it through the narrow filter of the conscious mind. The conscious mind is great for shining a little light on something and saying, hey, let's invite you to the party. I feel my Dantian, lower belly, as I breathe into it. Feel the breath filling the Dantian. I feel my qua, feel my hip joints. Allowing those to relax and encounter those. I feel the space around my body. I resonate with, my, with the space around me. I'm not the space, but I resonate with the space. The space resonates with me. Feel my elbows and I reach with my elbows, opening my shoulder joints. And I feel the chi in my hands, feel them filling. Feel the substantiality of my body. I also feel the insubstantiality of my body. Feel my breath. I 
feel the substantiality of my breath and I feel the insubstantiality of my breath. The more you can create this sustained state of meeting, the more familiar it becomes and the more you can apply it in all manner of situations. Take a deep breath, inhale. And exhale. Clear. And feel into the emptiness. Okay, grab a seat. First of all, this <laughs> let me just let me just say that this may not be your way of of describing the event that just happened. This is my way of doing it. It's a way that I found that is a repeatable way of getting to a state, of a heightened state of presence, meeting, energy, fullness, engagement, that whole thing. So um, language, you can, you can monkey around with the language if you like uh, to, uh, uh, to, to fit your own ideas, but the, uh, uh, how did that work for you guys? Nice. Really, really well. Um, yeah. I felt like I had a car, uh, I was a, a very lively and energized cardboard cutout in the sense that I, <laughs> I could step forward and my outline would still be there, you know, like, I had made myself connect to everything. Like, oh. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Good. Valerie. Um, I find that when we uh, empty, disappear at the end, I don't want to. <laughs> you don't want to disappear? I don't want to. I, I, my, I still am in feeling my elbows and my fingers and lifting and dropping um and it i mean i'm not it's just it doesn't i don't i don't i, I don't want to stop that you know I, I it's not that i don't want to stop it it's just i'm in it and i guess i just don't know how to make that disappear um i don't know that i'm interested in it disappearing <laughs> and i can't blame you if, uh, if you're at a good place, you know, why, <laughs> why leave? Uh, the advantage of doing it is to familiarize yourself with the emptiness. That's the advantage I see of doing it, of being able to uh, kind of get some of the meanness out of the, out of the way and allow it just to happen. There's a, a flow that occurs there that from the big chi that, um, I don't have to think about it. Just it's just sort of, I, I've, it's like uh, priming a pump. Once I've, I've created this flow, then the pump just keeps on going, and I'm I'm very happy about that. You know, I just I don't have to keep 
keep working at it. It just it's 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 going on. So that's the advantage I see of that. But also the ability to familiarize yourself with the emptiness is allows you to get closer to the source of all this stuff, the mystery. And then we, if we can familiarize ourselves with the emptiness, then we can let go of stuff, which then makes it easier to put stuff back to be able, because we're not, it's not, we're not uh, attached to it in a, in a fixed way. It's, it's something we can reach and withdraw at, at will. That, that's, that's the way I see it anyway. Well, it almost feels to me like, and I guess this is why uh, it's like, I don't, uh, I'm not finding the right words for this, but I feel empty and full at the same time. That's perfect. So it's, oh, well, good. That's perfect. So yeah, so we're talking about, you know, it, when we get to these places, these very insubstantial places, language is you know, kind of fuzzy. So uh, I'm just looking for language that works, language that you know, it doesn't have to be true in a absolute sense. It's true in the context of this particular game that we're playing. That's what I'm, I'm looking for. Cool, anybody else? Stan, you have, you have to get off mute though, Stan. There. Uh, the only uh, one thing that I really noticed is that this is probably the longest time that I felt like there's energy and that I'm there. Because uh, even with the form, uh, it's uh, getting a little bit better, but I don't have that same uh, amount of energy, same fullness or substantiality. It seems like this is probably the longest time that I've done it. So cool. to me, that, hey. That's, that's great. That's saying something, Stan. Yes, at, I think so. have been at this a little while. So uh, <laughs> uh, that's, that's terrific. If, uh, you know, mark this one, mark the day on the calendar. That's I great. think so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful. Anybody else? Scott. Um, any suggestions on when something starts to, when you start to get tension somewhere or like I, I, for some reason I get my calf cramps up sometimes and then I got some tension in my shoulders and I try and just try and, you know, relax into my form, but sometimes it just, I mean, if they eventually go away, if I, they eventually go away, I was just wondering if you had any, any uh, Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, First of all, those are your friends. <laughs> okay, <laughs> they're, they're, they're your little buddies. And they're there to tell you, they're, they're, they're saying to your conscious mind something that your pre-conscious mind has been saying to you for maybe ever, you know? And uh, it's, it's saying, here I am. And, and you know, <laughs> now, I. I get to do something about you. So it's like, oh, shoulders are coming up. Hi, shoulders. So glad you could join the party here. Ah, yeah, okay. We're just gonna just kind of relax into that and let that go. We'll reach with the elbows and oh, okay. How's that feel, shoulders? Thank you, yeah, that's good, okay. And it's like that. So that's what I would suggest is don't look at as a setback but as a, an opportunity. That's what we're, you know, what we're looking for here with, with doing these things is, is not that to do it perfectly, it's to do it a little bit better than I did last time and make a little progress in what I'm, in what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And the, um, so I think that if, if you approach it with that attitude, you might, uh, you might find it, have a little more fun with it. And like cramps, okay. I get those too sometimes. I mean, there's other things you can do, like take minerals and things like that to make sure that you you don't do it. You you do a lot of walking in your profession, so you uh, 
it uh, so it you know the yeah it's just it's just the one the back of one calf so it, and i don't get cramps it's just something okay. with just something with my posture yeah okay so then that's that's there to say hey there's something with your posture there let's uh, let's take a look at that what can i do to make this go a little bit a little bit smoother so I think that's 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 where you go. Thank Lynn. I had a, a lot of trouble. Um, I have in the past had trouble with the calf cramping, particularly when I'm standing in the the heels, you know, together. heels together stance, which on ping we never stand in, right? So it hasn't been my practice over years and years. And Scott, I find that usually when that happens, I it seems like I'm a little bit further back than I should be. And if I you know, sink forward, not lean forward, but sort of move my substantiality forward. It, it helps get rid of the calf, the cramp. I don't know if that'll work for you, but that's just something that, that I found. Cool. Good. Cool. Anybody else? Okay. Oh, good. Let's take this and uh, apply this to bone breathing. And, uh, this is something I've been doing for a number of years, and uh, I think it's very helpful. Because um, a lot of us tend to lose bone density, particularly as we move into uh, our later years. And uh, you want to slow that down or maybe even reverse it. And it's something that you, um, uh, the flies in the face of conventional wisdom, the idea of reversing bone density loss, but it happens and it happens as a direct result from doing various types of Qigong. And um, I know people who, who particularly women who are saying, oh, your doctor says, yeah, you've got uh, osteopenia or osteo, um, uh, or, um, uh, what is this? What's that? Osteoporosis. Osteoporosis, thank you. And uh, then they'll go and engage in a Qigong set, Qigong exercise over a period of not months, but more like, more like years. But uh, uh, they go back and doctor says, huh, you know, the test must be wrong because it shows you have more bone density now than you did last time we did the test. And uh, uh, the idea that, that you could do something proactively that would actually reverse that is sort of a, it's not conventional wisdom, but it happens. And it is something that is part of the you know, the, the Chinese martial arts um, uh, you know, ideas uh, says, you know, for, for a thousand years or so. So it's uh, the idea that you can increase your, your density by doing that. And particularly, you wanna to get to the bone marrow when you, when you are able to activate the bone marrow, then you are uh, energized that, then you're able to greatly increase the, uh, the aliveness in, in the bones. Um, Bodhidharma uh, Dhammo, he was a Buddhist monk, Indian Buddhist who uh, uh, started the Shaolin temple. And he wrote a classic called the uh, the bone marrow and brain cleansing classic. And the idea there was that there's a correlation between your brain health and your, your bone marrow. And what we now know is that uh, your, in your bone marrow are being produced blood cells and lymphocytes and uh, uh, a number of other things that are really important for your, for your health and that as we get older, there's a tendency for the bone marrow to turn to, to get fatty and turn gray. It starts off nice and pink and very alive and, and juicy. And then it, uh, as you get older, it tends to 
turn gray and to get very uh, uh, dull and, and inert and, and the chi does not, does not flow. And that will also affect the blood that's getting produced there, which then goes to all of the cells in your body. So if you can reverse that, if you can change the quality of your bone marrow, and this is the essence of, of bone marrow cleansing, if you change that, then you change your body. You create a new vitality, a rejuvenation. You also, it also resonates with your brain and it creates a, a healthy brain as well. So the, um, the exercise that I've been doing for a long time, and I have to say, I don't do it all the time. I just, whenever I think of it, um, is one that we've, we've touched on before, but I'd like to go in a little deeper today. And that is to, as you, um, you, know, just, you can do it standing or sitting. I'm gonna do it standing. And um, I'm gonna bring that idea of the meeting back into that. So you step out. get into the three pillars. You feel that energetic connection with the earth, reach with the elbows, reach with your crown of your head. Tap into your coherence, your presence. Be aware of what it is you're doing. That is, we're doing an exercise which is designed to Energize your bones and your bone marrow. And you want to go into resonance. You want to meet your body in a way that there is no separation. There's just, there's a resonance with it. So begin by feeling the index finger of your left hand. Point and reach with that. Feel the energetic coherence there. And imagine that you're sucking in a white mist through your fingertips in the left hand. And bring, draw that up the arm and have a circle around the arm. And then for to start, we're going to actually hold the breath and contract the muscles in the arm, both the upper and lower arm. From, uh, feel that piezoelectric charge that comes with it, with that. That's pressure electricity. And just when you feel that contraction, just feel the the there is a uh, an electricity that gets produced there whenever we do that. And take that and allow the energy, the chi, to go in through that white mist to go through the pores in your bones and into the bone marrow. And obviously, you're not hanging on to that first breath, but the, I'm going to walk you through it here. So you're taking that into the bone marrow. And then as you exhale, you relax that left arm and point with your right hand, reach with that and allow the white mist to go out the, uh, the fingers of the right hand, only now it's a little bit gray because it's taking the energy, taking some of the stale energy and you're disposing of that. You're breathing out through the fingertips. So we're going through this rather detailed and lengthy and it's gonna take you out of, out of the breathing cycle, but necessary at this point. So now you point and reach with your, the fingers, of the, the index finger of your right hand Draw the white mist in through the fingertips, up the arm, and contract the muscles and feel the energy, the white mist going into the bone marrow and cleaning, rejuvenating, renewing. And as you exhale, you relax the right arm and reach with the left and allow the energy 
go out as a gray mist out through the, the fingers of the left hand. Okay, so I'm gonna be a little briefer in my description this time. So inhale through the fingers of the left hand, point reach, draw the energy up, hold. And this time, don't bother with the contraction, just feel into your, your arm, feel into the bone marrow, allow that to settle in. And as you exhale, point with your right finger, index finger, and allow the energy to go out the right hand. Now feel the point with the right index finger, draw the energy, the white mist into the right hand, up the arm, allow that to settle into the bone marrow hold. And relax that and exhale through the left arm. Inhale through the left hand. Feel that energy into the bones, into the bone marrow, and exhale through the right hand. Inhale through the right hand, point reach, feel that connection, and exhale through the left hand. Now feel the toes of your, the, your left foot, particularly the big toe and draw the white mist in through the toes of your left foot, up your left leg. And feel that settling into the bone marrow there. And exhale through the toes of the right foot. Inhale through the toes of the right foot. Feel the energy settling into the bones and in the bone marrow. And exhale through the left foot. Inhale through the left foot. This time draw the energy all the way up the body out and out through the left hand. Inhale through the right foot. Draw that up, feel that settling into the bones all along the right side and, out to, and fill up the right hand and then out through the fingers of the right hand. Feel the, feel the the left foot, draw the energy up and out through the right hand. Feel the energy in the right foot, feel the bones, draw that up and out through the left hand. Feel the energy through both feet, up both legs, into your hips, into your spine, into your head, into your collarbone. And out through your hands. Draw the energy into the fingertips up the arms, through the collarbone, through your back, your head, your chest, your hips, your legs, and out through your feet. Now just let all that go. Once you've established this, then you can allow it to continue at that superconscious level, priming the pump.
feel the electricity in your body. Feel it in your connective tissue system. Feel the aliveness there. Feel the connection with the earth chi through your balls of your feet, through the bubbling well. Feel the connection with the heaven chi through the crown of your head. And feel the ball of your right foot, set your right knee, spiral down to the left and step in with the left foot. Take a deep breath. And clear. Let go of the energy that you know you can bring it back anytime you want. You don't have to hang on to that energy. Grab a seat, please. How'd that go? <laughs> good, good, good. Yay, happy campers, good. Any questions on any of that? Lynn. So the, um, the tightening of the muscles at the beginning in the arms. Yes. Is that, is that something you should do the first time on each part of the body or is that something you should do sometime? What was, what's the point of that? The point of that is just to familiarize yourself with the, with the, um, the electricity okay. that gets produced by muscular contraction. And that's happening all the time. Anytime you contract the muscles, which is basically if you're alive and there's, uh, there's high isoelectric charge happening all the time. And it creates an awareness of that. It, uh, it locates the, uh, the energy for you and uh, it allows you to recognize that as a thing. So that whenever I, you go back to feel the, the energy going into the bones, there's, there's, a, it's, it's a step toward recognizing that insubstantiality. And uh, after you get the hang of it, then you throw it away. It's just a tool to, uh, to get, get that started, get that, you know, get that awareness going and uh, to let you know that it's a thing going on here that, that you can feel into your bone marrow. And it's, uh, it's deep in there. But once you, once you do, you recognize that it's not like, you know, feeling a thumb in your eye. It's, a, it's, <laughs> there's, it's a very insubstantial feeling, but it's a, it's a thing. And you get familiar with that, then you can, you can then move it around a whole lot easier. So I say, you know, you, you tighten that up just to get familiar. Cool. Anybody else? Stan. Now, uh, uh, when you're doing it, I, th I felt I was you know, doing it, but the uh, thing I'm uh, sort of leery about is uh, you're just taking it all in, uh, getting it uh, into the bone marrow, and then releasing it, re sending the mist out. Does it matter uh, that uh, you don't send it the same way as we did it today? Because I'm thinking of the, uh, just to remember all of that could be a, uh, oh, might be a problem. I'm, I'm just making it up as I'm going along, Stan. Oh, I see. So you okay, can get so the basic <laughs> part. So it's you can get the, the basic important thing part. is you get the, you get, you get the joke. The, oh, that's okay. the important thing is you get, get the joke, you get the feeling that, because it's something, once you get the hang of it, I just put my hand out here like this and I've done it. You know, it's- oh, okay. You know, 
the breathing is is a uh, is a nice thing to add to it, you know, because that's always cool. But you don't have to. And once you get familiar with this, then you can generate that. You can do it a hundred times a day, and it takes you, you know, five seconds. Yeah, Rick. Uh, Stan, Stan, I've been doing this since he first taught it weeks, if not months ago. And I do it every morning. And I usually just bring it in through the fingers, let it out through the toes, and let it go through the whole body. I do it three big breaths, and I work on various parts of the body. You're in charge. Ah, but OK. Let it in, okay. but also let it out. Yeah. Very good. Beautiful. Good. Cool. Anybody else? Scott. OK, not a question, but I had some really weird phenomena here. Yeah. So I was sitting on the couch, Valerie was behind the couch, and I actually had to ask her if she was moving the couch because <laughs> you know, she was moving the house, we were having an earthquake. I have no idea, but it was really weird. <laughs> like I wasn't moving myself, but something was moved. The earth moved for you, huh? <laughs> yeah, no, literally. And then, um, yeah, that, was, that oh. was really weird. And then um, never, I never had this before. To this level before but you know when we started started doing through the fingers um you know how you, when you point your index finger you know it fills up and and it gets you know it's a really strong feeling well all five of my fingers felt that to like a re and i'd never had it that nice hand like that before it was nice. that was cool that's yeah. nice that's, that's good that's it's it, it's working. <laughs> yeah, and I can actually, I can actually create that result now. Cool. Fabulous, fabulous. Dennis, you had something. Yeah, as a testimonial, I I had a um, I had necrosis of the knee, which the part of the bone actually the bone cells actually died, and the only treatment was just to stay off it. And they told me six months, and I I practiced bone breathing, and it was it was better in three. So I don't know, something worked. Bravo. Bravo. Yes. Excellent. Definitely. Good. So I think it's, 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 it's an important thing to do, you know, whenever you think of it and uh, just kind of get that, get that sense of, because it creates a pattern where, like I say, once you start to prime the pump, you're, you're at a super conscious level, the more you can get into that super conscious state, you can just kind of activate it very easily and very quickly. And you don't have to spend a whole lot of time huffing and puffing to make it work. It just it's just like there. And then it makes everything better. So bring that. So the, uh, the takeaways from tonight are getting that meeting into each of these exercises, into each breath, into a, you know, any time, <laughs> you know, just bringing your, bringing your whole game to life is the uh, is the just spontaneously and fully and and enthusiastically embracing the moment and really getting in there and and um, you know uh, digging it and then this this creating the increased structure which enables you to play the game a little longer if you're not old and fragile so it mm -hmm. uh, you get to uh, you know, you get to to be more vigorous in playing the game. So great. Yes. Okay. Oh, Rick, you had something? Just, just a quick note. Listen, your body is your house. So always have a house party and always welcome your your own guests in. Be glad to, <laughs> be glad to see them. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> cool. Very nice. Okay. Great. Love you all. Thank Have you. Bye -bye. Thank care. you so much. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Bye, guys. Love you. Bye.